So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And this one's gonna be called Eclipse. Oh, well, sounds like a weird name for a movie. That's not something any rational person would stare at. Well, it's the name of the <laughs> third book, sir. Our hands are tied. Oh, yeah, why, who did this? I don't, I don't have any suspects <laughs> at the moment, unfortunately, sir. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we track them down soon. So anyway, at the end of the last movie, Edward proposed to Bella, right? That's right, sir, and in this movie, he's gonna do that again. What, did she say no? She says no, sir, and she keeps saying no, because a lot of marriages end in divorce, you know? It's a big commitment. But her main motivation is to be an immortal vampire with him forever, for eternity. That's right, sir. Oh, I feel like that doesn't make any sense. How is this even yeah. a conflict? Listen, sir, the story had to be stretched out for money purposes, right? So I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about manufactured, meaningless conflict. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. I do like money purposes. They're the only purposes that <laughs> matter, sir. Also, in this movie, Jacob's kind of fighting for Bella's love. He wants to be the one she chooses. But didn't the last movie end with him being like, ah, okay, looks like Bella's with Edward now. Oh, my God. That's so weird. Well, what's going on? I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it kind of feels like you're back on my back about manufactured <laughs> conflict. Oh, I accidentally got back on that thing, didn't I? I apologize. <laughs> Thanks, sir. So anyway, in this That's movie, so that red-headed vampire, Victoria, whose face is just completely changed for some reason, is on her way to kill Bella because she's <laughs> obsessed with her. Right, why is that again? Well, she's the main character. Right. So in Seattle, Victoria, <laughs> she's working on building an army of newborns. Oh, going to war with babies is tight. No, 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 newborns as in people that were just recently turned turned into vampires. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, Alice has a vision that the army's moving towards them, and they're gonna be in Forks, Washington in four days. <laughs> four days? Isn't that like a four-hour drive? It is, yeah. Can vampires not drive? No, they could drive. I mean, even if they walk, that's a two-day walk. I don't know what to tell you, sir. It's gonna take them four days. They're gonna come out of the water. Oh, very slow vampires. And so since Jasper knows all about newborns, he's gonna lead a kind of training session. Which one was Jasper again? Well, he became a vampire during the Civil War, and he's the youngest of the Cullen clan. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and so the actor's gonna have to do a southern accent and we're gonna have some flashbacks to him during the Civil War. Do you think it matters that he wasn't at all doing a southern accent in the first two movies? No, it's probably fine. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Any other <laughs> side characters getting random flashbacks in this thing? Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because Rosalie's gonna get one too. Which one's she again? Well, she's one of the vampires, sir. I'm almost sure of it. Nice. Anyway, she's telling Bella about how <laughs> she didn't get sure to choose to become a vampire. Her life was absolutely perfect and she didn't want to become one. Oh, absolutely perfect, huh? Those are strong words. What was her life like? Like. Well, she was super in love with this guy. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, and then he, you know, assaulted her with a bunch of his friends and left her to die. <laughs> oh my god. Just an absolutely perfect life, you know? That's not, that, that word doesn't mean that. <laughs> anyway, then she got turned into a vampire and killed all her assaulters one by one and saved her ex-boyfriend for last and killed him while wearing a wedding dress. Yeah, that actually sounds a whole lot more interesting of a movie than the one we're making. Definitely. <laughs> do, do you think that's a bad sign? No, it's probably fine. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> oh, and Bella's also gonna be told about some werewolf history. Oh, yeah? What did she learn? Well, there was this big fight with the vampires, but this one lady, she saves the last spirit warrior of the tribe by distracting a vampire with her own blood. Oh, smart. Yeah, and so she dies because the way she got blood was to stab herself in the stomach for some reason. Oh, did she not know that other parts of the body have blood in them too? I guess not. Whoops. <laughs> we'll see. So anyway, the vampires are going to get the werewolves to come train with them because everybody's coming together to protect Bella. So a bunch of humans in Seattle are dying and a bunch of vampires and a bunch of werewolves are preparing to die yeah, and coming together despite a rivalry that spans centuries. Right, all that, all that, just for Bella. That's right. But so, like... <laughs> Like, why? Well, sir, like I said, she is the main character. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, it's a life and death situation for a bunch of vampires and werewolves and innocent humans, all because Bella's on the movie poster. That is an important character trait. <laughs> so anyway, then there's gonna be the big training scene with the vampires and the werewolves. <laughs> a training scene, huh? What's that like? Well, the vampires push each other around for a couple of hours while the werewolves watch. And that's helpful for everybody? Apparently so. Well, great. Yeah, and then it's time for a fight. Oh, very exciting. I can't wait to see the main characters in some action scenes. Oh, well, actually, the main characters, they're gonna go camping. What? Yeah, they want to get Bella away from the action, <laughs> and so Jacob goes along to mask her scent, and also Edward's there. And they go camping? <laughs> they do. They go to the top of a mountain, but you know what happens there? It gets cold. So as the side characters are battling vampires, the main characters are gonna battle, you know, hypothermia. They are, mm -hmm. and since Edward is a cold vampire, Jacob is gonna have to cuddle with Bella to keep her warm. <laughs> I'd sure like to see them fight a vampire army, though. Well, we're gonna have Jacob spoon <laughs> Bella and make eye contact with Edward, which is just as exciting 
exciting as a vampire <laughs> fight. Is it though? So anyway, the next morning, <laughs> Jacob finds out that Bella finally said yes to Edward's marriage proposal, so he's all pissed. Oh, he is? Yeah, he doesn't want to take no for an answer. He's like, I know you love me, you just don't want to admit it. And that's romantic? It sure <laughs> is, sir. And then he's like, maybe I'll go get myself killed in the fight if you don't choose me. Kind of feels like emotional manipulation. Actually, it's romance. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> then she kisses him, so he stays, and he just leaves anyway. You know, I can't help but feel like this is putting some weird messages out into the world. Yeah, messages of love. Ah. And then we're gonna show some snippets <laughs> of the fight with the newborns, and then Victoria is gonna find Bella and Edward. Oh wow, how'd she find them? Well, she could smell Edward, so she tracked them down pretty easily. They went through all that trouble of masking Bella's scent, but Edward's scent was traceable the whole time. Right. That's right, sir. Very dumb protagonists. And then it's time for our freaking showdown with Victoria. Oh, is it gonna be tough to beat her? We've built this showdown up for three movies. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, see, Bella does the foreshadowy thing we shoved in everybody's faces earlier. And does Bella stab herself in the stomach like that lady did? No, she realizes that her arm also has blood in it, so she cuts that instead of her stomach. Very smart. Yeah, so then Victoria's <laughs> head just kind of comes off. Oh, yeah, it just kind of comes off, so that's all done. That's that, that, that that's all over with. Just pops right off. Okay, great. And then those evil Volturi vampires, they show up and they're like, guess what? We're gonna be in the next movie. Very ominous. Also, Jacob breaks some bones, which doesn't really affect anything, and that's it. Wow, well, it sounds like it's gonna make money. Probably. Kind of makes me <laughs> sad that there's only one book left to adapt. Yeah, I wish there was a way we could squeeze some extra money out of it. Of course, yeah. <sighs> Again, I have yet to watch any of the Twilight movies, but it's still hilarious to watch these. Really knowing nothing about these later movies. Like, I knew about Twilight, I knew about New Moon. I knew little bits about Eclipse, like Bryce Dallas Howard coming in and taking over the role for that one girl, whatever her name was. Outside of that, I know nothing. And it's still funny. Like, it's still hilarious because the movies are bad. And I just know they're just horrible. Everybody always says they're horrible. You all have been telling me, don't waste your time to even watch them. Part of me kind of still wants to. I don't know. I think I'm just going to watch these and then I'll decide after that. And then if I feel like it, maybe I'm like, all right, I'll just watch these again. I don't know. Yeah, nothing about these movies makes sense. And I'm, I, I wonder, is it a scenario where the books are just that much better? They always say that, you know, the books are better than the movie or the books are better than the TV show, whatever the case. And I know that's true in, in a lot of cases, but are the movies that bad that the books are really that good? Or were the books pretty much about the same? And this is just really, you know, a mirrored image of what you read in the books. I, let, let me know. That's why I need to know. If you read the books, let me know if that's the case. Are the books just far and away better than these movies? Then maybe I'll read the book. <laughs> no, I won't. That's why I think about this. Uh, obviously, he's going to do another one. Maybe he'll do the, the last two movies together. Maybe he'll do Breaking Dawn and just do one video on both. Or maybe he'll split them up. I mean, I probably would. Let me know your thoughts on that. If you read the books, are the books better than the movies? Or if you're just that big of a fan... Is it vice versa? The movie is just so good that it outshines the books. I'd be interested in knowing. Also, just a question. What is your favorite book to film at adaptation? Let's talk about it. Let's just talk about it now. Might as well. That might be a better discussion than what these movies have done for us uh, overall. Now, the pitch meetings overall have been great for these. I love them. Uh, even though I've never seen the movies, I feel like I've experienced them based on how he goes about these pitch meetings. Uh, writer guy and producer guy. They just go at it, and I love it. Producer guy was hilarious, though, when he's, you know, he's hoping it was going to be a war or, or fighting with babies, and it wasn't. He, he looks so disappointed. That was hilarious. So it's just little things like that that I love that, that Ryan George does in these videos. Let me hear in the comments below. Those are my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know your favorite book to film adaptation. I'd really be interested in, in what you guys think there. You might bring some up that I, I'm not thinking of or maybe wasn't even aware of. And then let me know what you think of this pitch meeting. And also, we can talk about Eclipse. But that's all for now. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. If you enjoy the content, if you are subscribed, thank you very much for coming back and watching. If you leave a comment, I really appreciate it. Like this video and share this video or the channel with someone if you think they enjoy the content. You can also check out some of our other videos over here in reference to more pitch meetings and also our Willy Wonka verses between pitch meetings and honest traders. That's a popular one so far that I think you guys are really enjoying. So if you haven't seen it, check it out over there. Other than that, I will see you guys on the next one.